This video goes over the basics of entering an ODE into Maple, how to solve the ODE uh, with conditions, and how to extract out the solutions. Let's get started. Let's begin by writing a first order ODE. Good practice has it that you assign the ODE to a variable. That way you can refer to that equation later through just the variable. So eq colon equals is going to be our equation. Our equation will be a first order, so I'll go over to the palettes, select my derivative, x tab y of x, move over to the right with the arrow button, equals, and then of course we're back to whatever we're going to write. y of x plus f times x squared. And as you can see, that's exactly what Maple reads. But be careful because when you write a derivative, you got to make sure it is a derivative of the variable. For example, if I write dx of y without saying it's y of x, that immediately will make it zero. Here's another way we can write our equation though, is that Maple does recognize that if you use the prime notation, it will assume that the variable is a function of x. For equation, colon equals y prime equals y plus f times x squared. And you get exactly the same thing. If you really like to use the old style, you can use the diff command equation, colon equals diff, that's the derivative y as a function of x with respect to x, uh, equals y of x plus f times x squared. But I prefer the either prime notation or using the palettes. The last way we can do something is to use the dot notation. For example, I'm going to make my equation. Uh, now we're going to have x as a function of t. So I select over to calculus, put x space, uh, not space, but uh, right arrow, put the parentheses t equals x of t. Again, if you are using the dot notation, then it's going to assume that you're doing a derivative with respect to t. So if you say the same thing, eq colon equals, select in the calculus palette, the dot, put x, right arrow equals x equals x, it will substitute the function as a function of t. Anything that's beyond that requires just choosing one of the other palette characters here. Uh, for example, what if we have a second order differential equation? So I'll select the second order with respect to x of y of x plus the first order with respect to x tab y of x uh, plus y of x equals zero and that's how you enter your equations. Now that we know how to enter our ODEs, now it's time to solve the ODEs and the function or procedure that we need to use is dsolve. So here's our ODE that I've created and now I'm going to apply it to dsolve to get a solution. Again, good practice is to assign the result to a variable. So solution is dsolve and then we put in our ODE. Since there's really only one variable that is the, for which is the only function that is our, our equation, it will immediately sort of get, look for the solution to y of x. It returns the answer, and in fact, it returns the answer with a constant. Notice the constant is C1. This shows that it is a family of solutions because we have not given it any initial conditions, no conditions whatsoever. Let's try another one. ODE colon equals, I'll use the prime notation, x times y prime minus 2 times y equals x squared put a semicolon, show that this is what the equation looks like. And again, solution, desolve, ODE, and it returns a solution. Again, it will include a constant because this is a first order ODE and we have not included our condition. We can create a second order ODE as well. 
ODE colon equals. I'll use the derivatives here with respect to R of Z of R minus 6 times the derivative, first derivative, with respect to R of Z of R. Some people have asked me, do I really need the parentheses? And the answer is no. You can remove those parentheses, and it will recognize it correctly. Plus 5 times Z of R equals 0. What does the equation look like? Again, there's the derivative we expect. Okay. Solution, desolve. solve Oops. D solve ODE. And again, it will know to solve for Z of R. Okay, what happens if your ODE does have a condition or maybe a bunch of conditions? How do you include that into your D solve? Well, D solve expects either a list or a set of solutions. So here's our ODE, and what we're going to do is we need to create an initial condition equation. And I'll say row, oops, row of 2 is equal to minus 1. Okay, so we are ready to create our solution. D solve, D solve, curly bracket to save a set, ODEs and ICEs. And when you do, it knows that the only thing that the only variable it has to solve for is rho of z. And what it does, it produces the, the correct results. But you got to be careful because if your math doesn't make sense, Maple cannot solve it. Okay, let's do another example. And in this example, we have a second order ODE. Therefore, if we are doing an initial condition equation, we need two initial conditions. So I will use the two initial conditions, I, C, E, S, two initial condition equations, colon equals. And then I need to just list the, actually in a sequence, but not put them in a list, uh, the two equations. For example, uh, y of 0 is equal to 0 and y prime of 0 is equal to 1. Okay. Again, Maple will recognize, and let me show you what Maple thinks about this. It says, okay, it recognizes that y of 0 is equal to And then it says, I'm going to need to do a derivative of y and evaluate it at 0 and assign that equal to 1. So that's what the big D stands for. All right, we're ready to solve, desolve, curly bracket, our ODE is one of the equations, and then the ICES are two additional equations. Close, and it returns a result. Okay, you've been able to write your ODEs and your conditions. You've been able to solve your problem. How do you extract the solution? My recommendation is to use eval the procedure. In addition, I also recommend not assigning the solution to the variable itself. So I will create y underscore underscore sol right arrow colon equals. I'm going to evaluate for y of x given my solutions. It will extract it out. Now I have the expression called y sal. If I want to make a function out of it, I can do y underscore underscore sol, right arrow, colon equals, and make function out of y sol, comma, x, and now it is a function of x. At this point, now we can actually start plotting it. For example, I want to plot y sol of x from x equals minus 10 to 10, and it will make that plot. In addition, you can use this solution to test to see if it works. For example, you can do ODE test colon equals, I'm going to evaluate my ODE, where y of x is my y solution of x. And when it does, it puts in the two equ into the equation in the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Oh, it doesn't look like they're the same, but if you simplify our ODE test, you get 0 equals 0. The advantage, of course, is being, I'm extracting your solution is you can now use it and do integrals with it and things like that.
For example, what is the area under this curve? Okay, I'm going to, okay, area under curve, colon equals, I will integrate from minus infinity, let's put the infinity sign in, tab infinity, put the infinity sign in, tab y, underscore, underscore, sol, right arrow of x, tab x, and when we do this integral, it extracts out and is able to solve the area under the curve exactly, even though it's an irrational number. You've learned the basics of how to enter an ODE, how to solve for it, and how to extract the solutions. I suggest you go to my website, which is listed below, ghoul.prof. There you can find the document associated with this video. In the document, it shows information on how to troubleshoot problems, and it also has some extra bonuses, such as how do you do a series solution approximation to a differential equation that cannot be solved exactly.